And the images of this conflict really do speak for themselves. On day two, it's all about shock and awe. Let's quickly get you all the updates from the Russia-Ukraine conflict on day two. Fresh explosions, a missile attack has rocked the country's capital, Kiev. Ukraine has claimed that two Russian aircraft have been shot down near the country's capital. 10,000 assault rifles given to locals by the Ukrainian army in a very dramatic development. The Chernobyl nuclear plant, which is defunct, but was the site of a major nuclear accident in 1986, has allegedly been taken over by Russian forces. The European Union has banned the access of Russian diplomats at this point of time. So, Akshita, as you've been reporting since early this morning, 360 degree escalation on all fronts. On the ground outside Kiev, Putin's war machine at the country's capital's gates uh, and also repercussions all over Europe. That's right. Lots that's happened overnight, Shiv, and we're getting and putting out all those updates there on our screens. Ukraine is saying that they're putting back a fight back like never before against Russia. But right now, all eyes will be on what's playing out in yes. Kiev. I was speaking to Maria, who's been reporting for us so bravely from Kiev, from the capital. She tells us that from four this morning, there have been yes. non-stop explosions that they've been hearing there in Kiev. Many of the Maria. residents have been moved to metro stations, uh, to bomb shelters. Uh, you see those terrifying images also on our screen. Several residents have yes. been, in fact, shooting the kind of uh, scenes that they're witnessing outside their windows of their homes. And uh, you see how the sky is lit up in the night shift. Yes. Extremely worrying what's playing out in Kiev with authorities saying that today, Friday morning, Russia hopes to now capture the capital. Ominous explosions lighting up the night sky. These are images that have come in last night. India Today's cameras capture, you know, many of the images that you are seeing. Some of them are by local media and citizens, uh, you know, who've been fleeing their homes, entering bunkers and uh, bomb shelters. They've even taken refuge. We'll show you pictures in just a moment from now of huge crowds of Ukrainians, uh, you know, crowding into, into uh, metro stations uh, in an effort to stay away uh, from the line of fire because there are bombs dropping, there are fires and flares, uh, you know, lighting up the sky. And the images you're seeing on your screen right now, as Akshita said, are images of Ukraine's air defense system apparently activated. You can see flares, uh, you, know, uh, you know, a lot of sparks flying, uh, big fireballs. Uh, the Ukrainian government, the Ministry of Defense, claims that two uh, Russian aircraft, uh, we don't know if they're fixed-wing aircraft or helicopters, have apparently been shot down. Remember, yesterday Ukraine had claimed that seven aircraft uh, from the Russian Federation have been shot down, which would basically uh, take this entire number to about 11 aircraft uh, shot down since yesterday, which is a huge number by any stretch of imagination. But the images providing a hair-raising, compelling view of how this escalation is continuing relentlessly, Akshita. And it's the people on the ground who you've been speaking to since this morning and overnight, Akshita, who are truly the faces of this is of this terrifying so conflict know. the war machine is literally at their doorstep now you know it's so scary to even see this shiv imagine you're in your home you look out your window and the sky is lit up like this with missiles with fireballs as you're pointing out it's scary Maria was telling us that, you know, what you're seeing right now is in one portion of Kiev. This is a residential area with several high-rise buildings. So we're only hoping that this area was completely evacuated. Otherwise, you can only imagine what kind of casualty count we're talking about. This on your screens is the consequence of war. And one tends to wonder then, Shiv, what kind of a fight back really can Ukraine offer to Russia? We're hearing about locals also being given assault rifles. 10,000 assault rifles have been given to locals to put up some sort of fight against Russian troops. But is, can they really withstand a yeah. full-blown Russian yeah. assault? Truly, and, and you know, this is, uh, what you're looking at is shock and awe. It's a, it's, it's a phrase that was used, uh, you know, during the Gulf War. It was basically about paralyzing your enemy with so much firepower that, that they you know that they don't know how to react they don't have uh, you know even if they have the capacity to react they are so stunned into uh, uh, you know paralysis that uh, the enemy basically has their way and in this 
particular case, Putin's war machine, by all accounts from the ground, has overwhelmed Ukraine. There is no comparison between the two militaries, but the, 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 the defense forces of Ukraine appear to have been completely overwhelmed by what appears to be a shock and awe uh, you know, campaign by President Putin. Images coming in from different parts of the country from yesterday and today, truly telling a terrifying tale. Maria uh, uh, Paisarenko, a brave reporter on the ground in Kiev, uh, you know, who's been who's been reporting all through yesterday, overnight, and with us early this morning, continues to be with us. Uh, Maria, I hope you're well. Where are you? What's happening right now? Yes, I'm still in uh, city center Kiev. I can't go anywhere now, now because today we already have uh, this uh, military um, curfew. Uh, martial law was announced yesterday, so there is a curfew till 6 o'clock uh, in the morning. It's uh, uh, half an hour uh, yet uh, to pass, and then this curfew is uh, off. But um, the morning is not peaceful today in Kiev because we have uh, heard here two huge blasts at about four o'clock a.m., so it's um, two hours ago, uh, we have heard two blasts, uh, uh, and uh, it was heard in different parts of the city, so it was very strong, powerful, and uh, very loud uh, sound of explosion, and later uh, the videos uh, surfaced uh, on the internet, on social media, that, uh, that was, uh, this blast was the sound of Ukrainian armed um, forces, air forces actually, uh, shooting down uh, the Russian aircraft uh, above the residential area, a residential area above the left bank of Kyiv. So I'm now at the right bank. Uh, we have a Dnipro river, uh, which divides city into parts, into banks. I'm in the right one and uh, the residential quarters, a lot of people are living at the left bank. And there was a sh uh, the bombing, the sh or I guess uh, the attack of a Russian aircraft on the residential area of Kyiv, so it's not the military object. There are no military objects close to there. And after um, this aircraft was shot down, uh, the reports from uh, city council, from city mayor are so that there are casualties. Three civilians have been injured because of this attack, and one of these injured is heavily injured. So uh, there were fire brigades called to the uh, spot, and uh, the fire was put down, but uh, the, the um, the, the house yes. is uh, the building uh, is um, uh, at the brink of being r totally ruined. So uh, yes. maybe uh, city council uh, says it's considering evacuation Someone of people because uh, this house, this building, nine-story building, is uh, in bad condition now after this explosion, after yes. this aircraft fell and uh, there was a fire. So uh, this is information from today's morning uh, event. Yes. So uh, morning is not peaceful here in Kyiv and um, these blasts, far away blasts continue and we can he see the news that these blasts are coming from Hostomo uh, air, uh, Aerodrome, which is claimed to be under Ukrainian control. It still is, but the reports say that um, yes. there are other uh, also attacks in that area which Ukrainian armed forces are trying to repel. Uh, Maria, I'm, I'm glad you're safe. We're putting out images also of how several residents now have moved to metro stations. You've been telling us that most of the residents are staying in these metro stations, which have doubled up essentially as safe houses, as shelters. Since what's playing out in the last few hours, has there been any communication from the government, an evacuation order perhaps for Ukrainians living in Kiev? Uh, no, not yet, because uh, this event of uh, Russian aircraft targeting the uh, residential quarters came as a surprise at 4 a.m. Now is almost 6, so uh, no reports, no changes in the um, policy which the state has chosen have been made. So it's still martial law. The curfew is still on, and we are waiting for a new address of the president, which is going to happen, I guess, um, in several hours, uh, maybe at uh, 8 o'clock. So we'll see. For now, no changes so far, because it's early in the morning and the yeah. situation is not to come now. Yes. Yes. Maria, you know, uh, I, I know you're, uh, you know, uh, you need to report as well, so I'm going to ask you one more question before I let you go for the moment. Uh, uh, the images of the Russian army, the Russian military forces around Kiev, uh, uh, all of them have been captured on camera. I want to ask you, 
Uh, are you hearing sounds of the military operations from where you are? Uh, you know, have you, has anyone seen the Russian forces inside Kiev? We know that they are around. Have they entered? Are they inside the city? No, luckily, unfortunately, they won't be uh, anytime soon or, <coughs> I guess, never. Uh, because uh, all the pictures we have seen are from outskirts of Kyiv, from Hostomel, from Borispil and also Brovary, uh, mostly Borispil, uh, where uh, the um, uh, airport was loca uh, is located and uh, there were uh, huge fights yesterday uh, with Russian forces and airborne forces on the ground. In Kyiv, uh, uh, in the city, uh, we have not seen any Russian um, troops, Russian army, because Ukrainian army is very active in the streets. We see Ukrainian army um, uh, filling the streets also with equipment and uh, the patrols are all over the city. Uh, the police patrols are also strengthening um, for the two days so since the invasion started. And um, in the streets, everything is calm and actually as normal goes. And the governmental quarters are, of course, under harsh control of uh, Ukrainian army. And uh, in the city, you uh, kind of feel safe uh, in the streets, but not when you look up and see these blasts or hear these faraway explosions. Maria, thanks very much uh, for being with us uh, at this point of time. We're going to uh, let you go for the moment. We'll keep coming back to you for those updates. Uh, the pictures on your screen are of the damages of day one, uh, you know, in the war, with pictures of dead soldiers. It's always soldiers, Akshita, that pay the price, uh, you know, for the wars that are waged between politicians and world leaders. Yes. But this is, uh, you know, these are the remnants. And uh, the, the most numbing, scary part is this. these are images just from day one. Uh, day two has already started, as Akshita showed you, with images that are extremely, extremely disturbing. A Russian helicopter uh, that looks like a Kamov alligator, uh, you know, has been forced to land. And you've got images of flares and fireballs painting the night sky uh, over Ukraine. Now I want to show you a map. We're going to show you a map now of where the attacks, where Russia is attacking Ukraine from. This is a map that shows you and depicts for you, uh, you know, an overhead view of where each and every offensive is actually coming from, Akshita. Attacks happening in Mariupol. And that's where India Today's Gaurav Savant and Rajesh Pawar are reporting from, the only Indian team. Also Odessa, they're trying to enter through Donetsk. They're also trying to enter through the Luhansk area. All of these are the rebel-held territories to the east. And we've seen the images coming in of these very attacks, Akshita. You know, it's uh, not limited to just eastern Ukraine now. Yeah. They're moving in from across, from south also, as we just showed you, from the port city of Odessa. There have been reports of strike. Extreme west also, Shiv, while, you know, troops are moving in from there, you got reports coming in of explosions being reported there as well. Russia has a very, very clear strategy at hand. And what we're hearing is that today their focus is on getting here. You know, from Maria's report, what really stood out for me, Shiv, is that yesterday morning when she was reporting for us, yeah. in a matter of 24 hours how things have changed yesterday morning when she was reporting for us there were people out on the streets taking their dogs for walks and today Incredible. nobody's stepping out everyone's now holed up in metro stations in a matter of 24 hours how things have changed and this is the situation in the capital we can only imagine what it's like in places like where Gaurav is reporting yeah, from, from Mariupol. Yeah. and we'll and we'll have Gaurav live with us from Mariupol in just a moment uh, uh, that image of Gaurav Savant uh, uh, our friend and colleague reporting wild shells you know the, the, the loud sound and thud of shells from the background uh, you know was booming that's an image that's gone viral it's been used on international media as well uh, uh, Maria continues to be with us so I'm going to take one more question with her uh, Maria the images uh, and the map that we've just shown our viewers of uh, of where the invasion is taking place from it's not from one place it's from multiple sides right now what are you hearing from your networks about the scale of the invasion because until yesterday Maria Russia had said there is no invasion at all they were on record to say we are not invading Ukraine, we are only demilitarizing them with missiles and you know disarming them with standoff attacks. But clearly that is not true. This is a full-scale invasion, Maria. 
Yeah, right. You're you're totally right. Unfortunately, it's full invasion. And as we see, uh, according to what you've mentioned, it's also information warfare uh, together with airstrikes and other techniques of uh, Russian army and Russian government. So um, I watched Russian news, for instance, to understand their plans. And they actually reported yesterday that everything went according to their some plan, the plan of Kremlin, you know, and uh, the 72 objects in Ukraine were targeted successfully, so says uh, Russian propaganda. Um, and as we see, um, according to the reports of Ukrainian army, Ukrainian armed forces, air force are still operating, everything is fine, and uh, the um, airstrikes are being repelled as we have seen it uh, today uh, from this morning attack, which was repelled actually. And this is the technique actually. Uh, we also, um, I have spoken talking to some people uh, familiar with uh, Russian, uh, you know, uh, military activities, uh, uh, Russian military tradition, so to say, and um, these experts claim that Russia has uh, these tactics of, you know, short wars, like several days of war, and uh, some uh, experts here in Ukraine say uh, that um, maybe Russia wants to continue this active, uh, you know, military um, military actions till the end of this week and then it will be uh, all for, for now uh, and Russia wants uh, to use this as a tool uh, to satisfy uh, its demands uh, in mm -hmm. geopolitics. So uh, it's, it, it's unclear now what will be happening in the following days, but experts all say that this will be a short war, but uh, with, with consequences for both sides, hopefully. The information we're picking up, Maria and Shiv, uh, from the Deputy Interior Minister of Ukraine is that six explosions have been reported near Kiev. Now, according to him, this is the Deputy Interior Minister of Ukraine, Anton Gerashenko, who said that attacks are carried out by crews of ballistic missiles. Ukraine is also saying right now that a Russian aircraft was shot down over Kiev while it was trying to enter the capital, the Ukrainian air defense shot it down. You also had earlier uh, some statements suggesting that the Russian military was moving towards Kiev from the Somi region and the city of Konotop in the Somi region was surrounded by Russian military. So these are updates that Ukraine is putting out. They're saying that we're putting up a fight. We're not letting Russia walk all over Kiev, Shiv. Absolutely. I mean, this is a fight back. Uh, you know, many experts believe that in the absence of a NATO or Western intervention, Ukraine has no choice but to uh, defend itself with whatever it has. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's quite sad and pathetic, but assault rifles being given to citizens, uh, uh, you know, whatever air defense is still active, uh, you know, desperately trying to fend off this uh, aerial assault. And uh, Russia has... Uh, Top-grade weaponry. Remember that, Akshita. They've got weapons yeah. uh, including cruise and ballistic missiles that are capable of long-range attacks. So this is not something that is uh, very difficult for, for Russia. But bringing in Gaurav Savant, India Today's Gaurav Savant, who's been reporting fearlessly from eastern Ukraine. He's been the only Indian journalist and only Indian team reporting from the site of actual attacks. He joins me live now. The sun is not up just yet, Gaurav, uh, where you are. Uh, take us through what you've been hearing overnight because the pictures are extremely disturbing, Gaurav. The night sky lit up by explosions, by flares, you know, by haunting explosions, uh, 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 lots of fireballs and, uh, uh, you know, weaponry clearly activated at night as well. What's happening where you are in Mariupol? Because we hear that missiles have been hitting even this country's capital of Kiev with claims of more aircraft shot down. Shiv, you're absolutely right and we've been tracking both the Interior Ministry and the Defence Ministry here uh, in Ukraine. Now, eerily quiet here in Mariupol. Now, this this is supposed to be uh, or was, uh, you know, the apprehension was that this would be the nerve centre of initial operations in terms of Russian soldiers first, uh, as they say, liberating the East and then moving uh, towards the capital Kiev, but the assault appears to be directly on the national capital Kiev and both the Interior Ministry and the Defence Ministry say that Ukraine 
Indians are fighting back and hard. Uh, the fact that, uh, you know, Indian Air Force uses Su-30 MKIs, the Russian version of the Su-30, uh, Ukrainian government claims they've shot down two uh, Su-30s uh, of, of the Russian Air Force using the Su-27s of the of, of the Ukrainian Air Force, point one, point two. Uh, you know, that picture that we see of that night light completely, uh, night sky lit up in Kiev, is an incoming Russian ballistic missile uh, shot down uh, by uh, the S-300 system is what we are being told uh, by, by media here in, in Ukraine, uh, which means that they are fighting back and the entire suppression of uh, air defense of Ukraine did not succeed in the past 24 hours, though 14 airfields across Ukraine and majority in the east were targeted uh, by Russian uh, and ballistic missiles uh, by the air force, by their rockets, uh, and despite this targeting, uh, the the systems, the air defense systems are activated and operating at least some places. Of course, Russia has also put out an image of an S-300 uh, missile battery being taken down, a complete battery being destroyed uh, by the Russian assault. So pitched battles being fought on both sides. Uh, as Akshita was just giving our viewers details, information also coming that uh, from the Kharkiv side, from the other flank of East. Eastern Ukraine, uh, Russian forces are now moving towards capital Kiev. So pitch battles being fought on ground even here. So uh, Shiv, this is a multi-pronged offensive yeah. that is currently underway, targeting capital Kiev, perhaps with the aim to 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 ensure a regime change uh, in the national capital of Ukraine. Uh, you know, Gaurav, you're giving us a glimpse into exactly what Russia's strategy is to go ahead and uh, capture Kiev as well. Uh, overnight, there's been a lot of reports coming in on how the Chernobyl plant has been taken over by Russia. Air bases have been taken over by Russia. Can you give us a sense of what are the updates on that front? So, uh, Ukraine has just confirmed uh, a little while back that Chernobyl plant has been taken over uh, by Russian forces. A motorized uh, division had elements uh, that fought its way through and captured Chernobyl, including staff operating there. That's information that is just coming in. And this is information that Ukraine has shared globally, that Chernobyl plant. And this is, this is what they say is a threat uh, that is posed not just to Ukraine, but to entire Europe and the world, that Chernobyl, a nuclear power plant, which witnessed a terrible disaster, uh, is now in control of the Russian forces. Point one. Point two, uh, what the Ukrainian army is also claiming, Akshita uh, and Shiv, is surrender, alleged surrender by elements of a rifle uh, division, a platoon of a rifle division uh, near Kiev surrendered to the Ukrainian forces, including the sergeant major and 25 soldiers. And they claim that shortly after the debrief, they would be putting out videos and pictures of the Russian soldiers who Someone they claim you. have surrendered in this battle. But the other side of the story also is, whether it's information warfare or facts on ground, 10,000 assault rifles have been given to civilians to defend not just themselves, but also fight for the country at this point of time because every all hands on the deck situation has arrived for ukraine given this this pace speed of assault that comes from multiple flanks including from sea whether the sea of azov the black sea uh, air attack ground attack rocket attack missile attack ukraine is under attack from multiple flanks shivanakshita it's the you know the, the the most distressing images coming in from the cities of ukraine of those battered tanks uh, you know, uh, uh, the, 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 the corpse of a soldier, the humanitarian crisis in the, uh, you know, the cities of this country, all of it, you know, playing out with each passing minute, the war machine rumbling just a little bit louder. Uh, in just a moment from now, we'll have the 10, the, the 10 most haunting images that have come in in just the last one hour. Akshita, me and Gaurav have been sifting through all the images that India Today's cameras have captured. And I can tell you, it is, it is a difficult process to decide which ones to show you because many of these images are extremely disturbing. The costs and the true brutality of conflict and war. Not something to glorify, not something uh, you know, to, uh, to praise at all. This is something that should have been a last resort, but Putin's war machine relentlessly encircling the cities of Ukraine, paralyzing a proud country, bringing it to its knees in an effort to coerce and create regime change. Gaurav, what about Mariupol itself? That image of you, Gaurav, yesterday, that image of you, and I'm going to ask our producers to pull out that particular image which ran in our headline of Gaurav reporting while there was shelling sound right in the background. I want to pull that out. Producers are going to tell me when we have it. But Gaurav, what's the situation in Mariupol right now? 
this this is mario po you hear us since last night uh, you know uh, just at the time when it was anticipated that situation will worsen and these 24 hours uh, you know last night and this time was supposed to be early this morning uh, the yeah, the sound, apprehension this, was that is, there would be is, fierce fighting and russian forces would be moving in after ensuring that the airfield here had been completely destroyed uh, late last night uh, when we were reporting a lot of uh, equipment men and material moved to the borders to resist uh, what was possibly uh, you know the root of the russian assault so eerily as of now but several locals we were speaking to they have left the city they left the city because uh, they were told or they were under the impression that something uh, drastic is going to happen uh, overnight uh, or early this morning uh, and and that is why all of us woke up very early this morning uh, in in an effort that should there be a need to evacuate or move to a safer area uh, we should be prepared so uh, uh, you know even though it was it was barely 3 in in the morning here uh, people are up and about uh, uh, Pre preparing for any eventuality but so far it's eerily calm shiv i want to play i just want to play out i want to play out that video which has been picked up by international agencies as well of gorov reporting for us yesterday akshit and i were with him from here while shells were landing not far away from him in mariupol just take a listen to this this sequence really really scary stuff the military movement that's taking place towards the Ma'am, you've been standing in this queue for quite some time now. Military presence in this area. You can look at bombed and pockmarked houses here. But what you can also see is movement of the Ukrainian army in this area. Ukrainian army movement has this. This is Mariupol. You hear a series. Hear the sound. Hear the sound. This is Mariupol. This this is Mariupol. You hear a series. Hear the sound. Hear the sound. This is Mariupol. Truly scary that uh, that particular report that Goro filed for us. uh really sums up what the situation is currently in ukraine people sitting in their homes are hearing those sounds right outside and you can only imagine the fear that they have for the safety of themselves and their families uh shiv gorov both of you of course have reported on many such international conflicts in the past i want to understand from you how do things progress here because russia has clearly stated right now that their focus today is on you know going through and capturing kiev does that mean the end of ukrainian resistance then Gorov that's to you. Gorov that's to you. Samarot, you. Right, Shiv. I thought you'll take it first. Uh, you know, Akshita, you're absolutely right. Uh, Shiv and I have uh, have covered many conflicts together. Uh, we were in Libya covering uh, uh, the the civil war uh, there together uh, at a time when um, uh, you know the the MiG 27s of Colonel right. Gaddafi's Air Force they were strafing uh, and and we were running away Samarot, from that strafing, diving into a ditch. Uh, and and this is this is equally scary. Uh, uh, the, the situation here uh well yes they're moving yes. the russian forces are moving straight towards kiev but that doesn't mean that they will leave flanks uh, unguarded uh, wherever there are military concentrations uh, the effort appears to be to take down those military uh, concentrations of of the ukrainian forces remember the first thing uh, that the russian president vladimir putin said he said his aim is to demilitarize ukraine and to demilitarize it means they want to ensure that ukraine does not have a potent army navy or air force to be able to pose a challenge to russia point 1 point 2 ukraine should be protected by russia so that is the that that is his aim how successful will he be in achieving that aim remains to be seen because this these are just early days uh, barely 24 hours into this battle they have moved in but if they were thinking that there will be little or no resistance there is resistance that's coming in from from multiple directions and not just in any one pocket but almost across the country uh, ostobel airport shiv and i were talking about shiv you and i were talking about uh, that airfield where antonov aircraft are made uh, a very very crucial airbase 
Russians yesterday were in control. Late last night, there was a fierce counterattack, which means uh, Russian reinforcements did not come in. Uh, and the troops who were holding ground, according to the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense, those troops were completely... Uh, uh, they were, they were killed in action. They were killed uh, while, while uh, there in a counterattack mounted by the Ukrainian army. So this shows that Ukrainian army is putting up a stout defense. The fact that President Zelensky said Ukrainian army of 2022 is not the Ukrainian army of 2014 post Crimea. They have learned, they've carried out extensive exercises uh, with NATO forces. They're a professional army. They're now armed with whether it's javelin missiles or uh, other arms and ammunition provided by NATO countries. They are better prepared to defend their country. Shiv, of course, uh, can, can share more details on the military balance and the fight back. Shiv. Absolutely. We're going we're gonna to. Uh, slip into a very short break, Gaurav, but you're right, the military balance, uh, you know, truly is what this is all about uh, and, uh, you know, or, or rather the lack thereof. There is no military balance whatsoever when you compare Russia and Ukraine and, uh, you know, as Akshita was telling our viewers, in the absence of the NATO and the West actually deciding to step in, they're still, you know, they're still kind of putting the pieces together. Yeah. There's so much shock and awe. Things have happened so fast as Gaurav has been reporting from the ground. The West doesn't even have a plan in place. India Today is the only channel that's bringing you live, unrelenting coverage from the war zone itself. The places where the attacks are happening, we're taking precautions, but we believe it is important for us to be up close to bring you images of this war. Very quick break. Our coverage continues on the other side. Stay with us.